yesterday and we just didn't finish. We didn't do much of it? We're not, the goal is not to do everyone though, it's just to kind of hit around, you know? All right, turn right here. Okay, this is notes two. Notes two. So if you have notes three out, you need to get notes two out. Okay, so I want you to read through the top two. Okay, see what part of it you can do. I'll come bring you a little motivational sucker if you want. We'll take a minute. Uh, we're on notes too, maybe like the third page. Okay, and then remember, the goal isn't to do every question. It's just to kind of hit each topic. Find it? Oh, okay. So, yeah, but uh, this one, what I put there, so that's where I have to do it. You can actually take the journey. Good thing, but if you want max acceleration, you want a project. Just write down whatever you know. Whatever you do know. Do a, a little dum dum. Wow, these are not a hit. Too bad I bought a giant bag. Thanks, 
I have a kid that does it almost every day, and he'll like leave it a little unzipped. Uh, it's, like his few yeah. little chest hairs are coming out, and it's like honey, we know that you're a nice cat, but you don't need to have your chest hair poking out. <laughs> Uh, good question. So you're going to times the two down with the K, so it's a 2K, and then X to the power of one. Uh -huh. Perfect. And then did you take the derivative? You did? Okay, and then where does that have to happen at? Negative two. You read the... Oh, so I put in a uh -huh. two. What is the slope? I wonder it is for. Okay, so look, guys, you got to use your little context clues here. Okay, if we know that our equations are parallel, they have to have what? The same or equal slopes. Now, they're giving you two different things. One, oh. Oh, shit. Okay, it was just the fan. Okay. Okay, one of them was an equation. And one of them... Who said it? I said it. What'd you say? Oh shit. Oh, I thought you said, oh, the fan fell over. Those songs. Oh, so I was No, honestly, I was so surprised by it that in my mind. I was as surprised I heard So your mind changes facts, like when you get nervous, like your mind like changes. No, I just wasn't listening for anyone, like, to curse. When I was passing out candy, I was actually, like, listening to you talking. That was why. And it also seemed so unnecessary, you know, when you said it. That sounded kind of like a gunshot, you know? Like, you know, you can say a bad word in that case. Or you drop something on your toe, you know? All right, review, refocus. So if I have an equation, how do you find the slope? You take the, okay, how do you take the derivative of that? What would it be? 3x squared plus 2kx. 3x squared plus 2kx. Okay, now what about if I have two points? Can I find the slope? Yes, yes this is like eighth grade right here, okay? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I get 12 on top, 3 on bottom. 12 divided by 3 is? Four. And remember, if those are parallel, then their slopes are equal, so I'm setting these equal. Now, here's the problem. If I set those equal, how many unknown constants do I have? Many. Too many. I need to only have one, unless I have another equation. What else did they tell you in the question? X is negative two. Okay, you have to know to the other quantity to find K. So, X is negative two, plug that in. I'd have 2k negative 2 equals 4. Okay, what is this first term going to come out to be? Negative 12? Okay, good. Positive 12. Then this would be minus 4k equals 4. What's my next step? Okay, I'm actually going to just minus the 12 across, but there are multiple ways you could get the answer. So 4 minus 12 would give me negative... 8, and if negative 4k is negative 8, then what's k? 2, good. Okay, now look at the second one. Okay, very similar here. It says in the xy plane, the line x plus y is k, where k is a constant, is tangent to the graph of x squared plus 3x plus 1. What is the value of k? All right, so not it doesn't say they're parallel. This time it says that they're tangent. So let's just sketch a quick pic of what this would look like. x squared plus 3x plus 1, what shape is that? Okay, it's quadratic. We know it hits at 1, so I'm just going to draw it here. Okay, I don't know exactly where it has to be, but it'll be somewhere over there. Okay, now it says that I want this line to be tangent. So I want you to think about, if my line is tangent, how do I have to draw it? Okay, it's a line, so it has to be straight, true. Has to touch at one point, and at that point, does it intersect or is it just touch? Okay, so I'll say it's maybe like right here. Okay, in order for those to be tangent, they have to have a common point and the same slope. So, tangent line has the same point 
and the same slope as the curve. Okay, and then Jesus said at that point, that's true. It can't just have the same slope somewhere. It has to be at that same ordered pair. So I want you to think about conceptually what two things we have to set equal. The y values are the equations and the derivatives, which are the slopes. Now, do I want to use this equation in the form it was given? No, I want to solve that for y so I can take the derivative easily. So if x is on the wrong side, I'm just going to bump that over. So this is going to be y equals negative x plus k. Mm -hmm. So I have two equations, one, two. W do I want to set the originals or the derivatives equal first? What did you think? So it could be either one, but I want you to think about it. If I set these equal right now, how many letters do I have? X and uh, K. If I take the derivative, which letter is going to go away? K, because K is a what? Constant. When you take the derivative, the constant is going to go away, and it will just leave you with an X. So I'm going to set the Y primes equal. What is the derivative of negative X plus K we said? Negative 1. And then again, the k is a constant, so derivative is 0. Other side, what's the derivative? 2x two two x plus 3. And then if I set those equal, I can minus my 3 across. That gives me negative 4 equals 2x, which means that x equals what? Negative 2. Good. Okay, then from there, I know where the slopes are equal. I need to find where the equations are equal. So I'm going to come back to my original. Set y's equal. So I have negative x plus k on one side. I have x squared plus 3x plus 1 equal on the other side. Okay, but then just like Jesus said, they don't have to be equal anywhere. They have to be equal here. So if I know that x is negative 2, that means k is going to be the only thing left that you don't still know. So I'll have negative negative 2 plus k, negative 2 squared, 3 times negative 2, plus 1. And then blah, 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 solve it. Okay? So finish that one up, and then I'm going to give you a couple minutes, look at number 23, see if you can pick the right answer there. Okay? Because, no, this is not a 4. This is just a 2. Oh, yeah. I think you put a 4 there instead. Uh, yeah, it should be negative 3. Did you get it? Yes. All right, so look through 23. Read through it. It says, which graph of F, oh, I'm sorry, the graph of F is shown in the figure to the right. Which of the following could be the graph of the derivative? So that means that these would be F primes. Which could be the graph of the derivative. So for me, it's always easiest for me to go from the derivative back to f. So put a dot on your x-intercepts and then determine if they're mins or maxes. So for example, I'm going to do c for you. Okay, I have three flat spots. Which one should be a min or a max? The one in the middle. Should it be a min or a max? Okay, a min. So look at your original graph. Does it have a min in the middle? Then I know C is wrong. Okay, so out of your... Now also, what would the side ones both be? They would be neithers. So they're still going to go to a zero slope, but they're not going to actually change sign. Okay? So look at the remaining answer choices. See if you can cross out some more. Okay, which other one can we cross out? Okay, B. What does B not have? 
doesn't have a min or a max or an anything, right? These are both neithers. And so if I have two neithers and no maximum, this one clearly has a max here at the top. So I know that B can't be right. Which one? Okay, E is the harder one to eliminate. I'm going to save that one. Look at D. How many extrema does D have? Two. It should have a max and a min. Does my graph have both a max and a min? Because it passes from negative to positive. It does. So that's why we're saying it can't be D. Because my graph would have needed to have a max on the negative x's and a min on the positive side. Okay, now look at A and E. Do these both have a max in the right spot? Yes. How do we pick between A and E? Because we got it down to 2. You're at 50-50. The slope at the endpoints, right? What happens here? So look, I have a max, but then on the ends, what does my f prime go back to? Zero. f prime is the what of this graph? The slope. So that means that on the ends, I should have a zero slope and a zero slope. Now go back and look at your graph. Does it flatten out here on both of the sides? Yes. Now, does it fully turn? No but it goes back to zero and that's consistent with the way that your ends kind of flatten out. Okay? Yeah? Isn't E kind of saying it has a consistent slope throughout? Uh, it has the same concavity throughout. Because remember, this is F prime. So you're saying that the slope of F prime, which is the concavity, is the same? So like this would have had to be like a parabola or something. For, for E to be the correct answer. Okay? All right, we're going to do maybe one more, and then we're going to move on. Uh, let's do the related rate. Turn for me, please, to an ice sculpture right above the boat question. Okay? Okay, so it says, an ice sculpture in this form of a sphere melts in such a way that it maintains its spherical shape. The volume of the sphere is decreasing at a rate of 2 pi cubic meters per hour. At what rate in square meters per hour is the surface area of the sphere decreasing at the moment when the radius is 5? Okay, if you were in BC in first semester, you still learned this, but you didn't learn it from me. So it might be a little different, but it's the same thing. Okay, we do find given when. And then normally my fourth thing, if you remember there were four, it was E for equation. But look, they're going to give you these. Surface area is 4 pi r squared. And volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, if you're stressed out about the formulas and stuff, most of the time, if it's something like that, like a sphere or a cone, they're going to give it to you. So you don't have to go back and memorize all your like geometry, volume, surface area stuff. Okay, so look at your equations. Go back to your question. I want you to write down what we have and what we're finding. Okay, volume is what we have or what we're finding. Okay, what is the volume decreasing at? Good, negative 2 pi. So I'm going to put dv dt is negative 2 pi because the negative comes from the fact that it's decreasing. Okay, then what are we asked to find? At what rate is the surface area changing? So that's ds dt. Okay, then I'm looking for a when. When the radius is 5. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to start off with which equation? Yes. If it's a rate, yes. Correct. Okay, so which equation do we want to start with? We're going to end up using both, so it doesn't matter to me. Which one? Volume, okay. So dv dt, let's take the derivative. And keep in mind that they're not going to give you two equations if you're not going to use both of them. Okay, so at some point, we're going to have to take the derivative of both of these. 
Okay, dv dt, we're taking the derivative right here. Times the 3 down. What's 4 thirds times 3? 4. Pi r to the what? Squared times what? dr dt. Remember that because the bottom letter is time, any letter that you take the derivative of that's not time, you have to put one of those at the end. Now, from here, dv dt is what? Negative 2 pi. Then I have 4 pi. My r it told me is 5 squared. And then dr dt is an unknown. Now, I want you to notice that dr dt never made it into my list. Okay, but I'm just going to go ahead and keep solving anyway just to see what happens. So 5 squared here is 25. What's 25 times 4? 100 pi. And then if that's what my dr dt is, well then let's go ahead and solve. Divide by 100 pi on both sides. What's dr dt? Negative 2 pi over 100 pi. How does that reduce? The pi's are going to cancel out, and 2 over 100 is the same as what? 1 over 50. Good. Okay, so my pi's are gone. They crossed out. 2 over 100 is 1 over 50. Now, weird, because we don't know where we're going to use that, but let's take the other derivative. What was I actually asked to find? ds dt. That's this one. So let's take the derivative. What's the derivative of s called? ds dt. Okay, then what's the derivative of 4 pi r squared? I'm going to times the 2 down. 2 times 4 is 8 pi, but then I have to take away 1 from the r squared. Now it's r to the 1, and then I have to put 1 at the end. dr dt. And now you should know where you're going to end up using this value. ds dt is what I'm finding. So it's going to be 8 pi. My r was given to me. It's a 5. But then my dr dt I needed, it was a negative 1 over 50. Now, when I did this one with second period, we did this one first and then realized we didn't know this and had to go back and find this second. Doesn't matter which way you do it, you end up having to do both. Now, on top, what's 8 times 5? So really, this is 40 pi over negative 50. Which answer is the closest to that? Why do they not have a negative on it? Because they already mentioned it's decreasing. If you look right here, it says, uh, at what rate is the surface area decreasing? So they're already acknowledging that it's a negative value in the question by being specific, that it's not just changing, it's specifically decreasing. Okay? All right. Um... Do we want to do one more of those? Maybe one more? <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, okay, let's do this one. Sure. Sure, yeah, do it. Let's go. I believe in you. Okay, fine, given when. And notice right here, look, they're so sweet. They're giving you the equations. Okay, so you didn't have to have those memorized. They're already in the question stem for you. But I'm trying to prepare my fellow classmates. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay, y'all know how to find perimeter, right? What do you do? This, no? Add a bolt. Uh, 
already finding the rate of E. So that would be EPDT. Okay, and then in the question, they give you the rate that something else is changing. Okay, what's changing to just? The circumference. So DCDT equals. So far, so good. So now start taking your bits. Uh -huh. And you may not end up needing both right away. Okay, so Yoel, what do you have for your find? DPDT. Good. DPDT standing for? Perimeter. Okay, what were you given? Okay, DC standing for what? Circumference. Okay, so which one should you take the derivative of? Circumference. Have you done that yet? Okay. So if circumference is 2 pi r, when I take the derivative of that, Remember, r is like to the 1, so times the 1 down, what do you get? 2 pi dr dt. Now, what's the derivative on the c side? dc dt. And so then Kelly asked a good question. She said, what if I don't have a when? Well, look, do I end up needing a when here? No. Okay, my circumference is going to be 6, 2 pi dr dt. Um, I think it said increasing, didn't it? Yeah, it says it's increasing here. Last time it was negative because it said it was decreasing. Okay, so then from here I'm going to divide by 2 pi. And so this time I found out that dr dt is 6 divided by 2 is 3 over pi. Now, oops, don't circle it. Okay, that gets me kind of nowhere because when I look at my question, I wanted perimeter... That's not going to work. Can you write an equation for the perimeter of that square in terms of radius distances? Okay, so I'm going to give you a second to think about it, but I want you to give me a perimeter equation in terms of R's, not sides. How many R's? Close. You're going to need eight, because think about the radius is only halfway across, right? So I would have two here, two here, two here, and two here. So are we all good with that? The perimeter of my uh, square is going to be eight times the radius. Because each of my r's only gets me halfway across. Okay, this is my r. Well, that's not quite long enough. Okay? So now take the derivative of p equals 8r, and then we'll have our equation that we're finding. So what's the derivative of P? DP dt. What's the derivative of 8R? And then what's dr dt? We just found it. 3 over pi. So it'd be 8 times 3 over pi. Now go back and read the question, are we missing anything? units of measure. If we're ch finding the distance that perimeter is changing, what should it be measured in? If it's perimeter. Is that inches, inches squared, or cubic inches? Okay, perimeter is measured in inches per second. Okay, all right, set up your find given when on part B. You're done with part A. You're excited to do another one? Uh-huh, and you can make it 24 over 5. You're always going to need the derivative. Yes, the only equation they won't give you for sure is the diagram right there. If it's a triangle, they're not going to remind you of that. But anything else, pretty much, they have. Because normally you're taking the derivative of e dx. And so since your equation's in x, you're doing d dx, they match each other. The reason you have to add the dat or the drbt is because the equation has different letters than the t. This is, I feel like on here, like if we derivative, the, the constants don't cancel. 
Well, because they're in front of, uh, like, think about, like, the 3kx squared or whatever it was, right? Did the k go away? You times the 2 down with the constant. That's what, I mean, that's because it had exponents. Um, like well, in this one, think about that still has an exponent. It's just an exponent of 1. Right? So you times the 1 down, you get 2 pi. R goes down to 0, so it goes away, but then you have a DRBT. Now, you're right that normally the rules on these are not as complicated because the actual putting the model together is complicated. Yeah. But usually you don't have to do tons of like product, quotient, chain rule, all that kind of stuff. Okay, what is my find? Okay, DADT, very good. Now, specifically, what is area referring to in this question? The area between the circle and the square. So let's think about that in a second. What were we given? Okay, kind of the same. I'm just going to put part A. And then uh, our when, does it say that? Okay, when area of the circle is 25 pi. Okay, first thing I want you to do is write an equation for the area of the part that they're talking about. So if I want the area of just this shaded part here, What would I have to do with my area of my square and the area of my circle? Subtract. Okay, so area equals the square minus the circle. Now, what's the area of the square going to be if one side is 2R, as we talked about before? So this side is 2R. How do you find area? One side times the other side. So what's 2R times 2R? 4R squared, so I'm going to put area equals 4R squared minus, okay, then how do you find the area of the circle? It'd be pi R squared, right? Okay, then what do I have to do from there? Take the what? Derivative, very good. So what's the derivative of A called? Okay, what's the derivative of 4R squared? 8R dr dt. And then on the other one, it's going to be what? 2 pi r dr dt. Now, I want you to scan your equation to make sure we know everything before we start plugging in. dA dt is what I'm looking for. I know dr dt because I found it earlier. But do I know r yet? No. What is the when that they gave me? When it, so I'm going to have to go back and find r by setting 25 pi equal to pi r squared. And when you set that equal, it kind of makes sense. What is your r if that's your area? r would have to be 5. Very good. You divide by the pi to cross it out. And then if r squared is 25, then r is 5. And now you know all of your pieces. Say it again. Uh, DRDT we found up here, it's 3 over pi. Okay? So I'd have 8 times R is 5. DRDT is 3 over pi. 2 pi, bless you, R is 5. And then DRDT is 3 over pi. And then you'd be done. Now, um, because it's a radius, so a distance can't be negative. But that's a good question. Um, the other thing I do want to say, I can't remember if it was like Yoel or somebody, but they were after school talking about, well, what if I get the answer wrong in part A? If you got, let's say you messed this up and you got 24 pi, but you did everything here right, you just plugged in 24 pi, which was the wrong answer, they won't count you off for that twice. So if you get a wrong answer in part A, you can reuse that wrong answer and not be penalized again. So if it should have been... 24 over pi and you did something wrong, as long as you plug in your answer correctly, most of the time they'll still give you the points in part B. So those mistakes won't like cripple you forever. Okay? Oh, good question. It says indicate units of measure. If this is area, what should it be? Inches squared per second. What if it was volume? 
inches cubed per second. Yes? So we're not plugging in until we take the derivative of the A equation, right? You're not plugging in until you've already taken the derivative, correct. Now, there is one. Do we want to do the one off the homework that's like this? No. No? no. Oh. Does that mean you still want to do anything? Or? Boo! Get out of here. Okay. All right. Look at notes three. Do number one A and B and do number three. One and three. Okay, so don't throw away your notes. Maybe one day we'll come back to it. Maybe you'll study it someday. You never know. Okay, one and three. One is a part A and a part B. On what, the notes? What did you say? One and three. One is a part A and a part B. Back. Get it out of here. You need to study. We're all good. Yeah. 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 Okay, you'll notice that number one, there were two questions just like it on your mock exam. Not for this class. Yes, you are. Dude, I literally. Okay, so just start with this. If you want the integral of f prime, what's the integral? You of always f go to this. Uh, what's your name? F. And so that goes where you're at. Oh yeah. Sorry, no worry, I'm not. So just really ignore this for right now. So set up brackets. Okay, let's. Come on. You're the one that's test, honey. Let's go. Yes, you are. You have like how many absences? <laughs> okay, ready? What do you do for this first one? If you want the integral of f prime, what's the integral of that called? Regular f. And what do I put it inside? Okay, brackets. Then what do I do from there with my endpoints? Plug them in. So if I want x equals 3, I'm going to plug that in. That'd be f of 3 on top. And if I had a 0 on bottom, what's f of 0? How am I going to find those values? Okay, that's why they gave you this. So what's f of 3? What's f of 0? What's 5 minus 2? Boom. Okay. Now, part B, they gave you a chart. Same chart as above. But they're telling you that capital F is the antiderivative of little f. That's always true. And then it says f of 0 is 6. Find f of 3. What are you doing? Yay. Okay, f of 3 equals. This is what I want. What do I already have? f of 0 plus the integral from what I have to what I want. Now, what goes in the integral? The derivative of capital F, but what's that called? Normal F or little f. Okay? Now, why are they telling you to use a Riemann sum? What part of that needs a Riemann sum? Where do I need the Riemann sum for? The integral, right? Okay, an integral is the exact area. I don't know the equation to integrate it, but I can do a Riemann sum instead. So f of 0 is 6 plus. And then remember, the way that you do the um, Riemann sum is you do delta x times y1, delta x times y2, delta x times y3, etc. What are my delta x's from 0 to 3? Long version or short version? Short. Because each of my delta x's is how far? 1. So remember that whenever your delta x is the same the whole time, you can just pull it out to the front. So I'm going to do 1 plus, and then I want only the left y values. Which one gets skipped? The last one. So I'm going to take 2, 3, and 2. I'm going to skip 5. So like from 0 to 1, I'm going to choose the y value at 0 because it would be on the left in my graph. Then from 1 to 2, I'm going to choose 3 because it's the left y value. Okay? And then from 2 to 3, I'm going to pick 2 because it's the left y value. Okay? All right. Uh, look at number 3. You can do it. Uh, I'm just going to leave it like that since it's for your response. Yeah. 
Yes, bro. Yes. Do it, bro. Okay, try number three. Yeah, so I had a doctor and I never turned in like a note for my doctors. What if I go back and get one? I think that's so. I think technically it's like five days, but I think you turn it in. And they'll still take it. Yeah. And will they just believe you? And will they just believe you? Okay, mm. I want my trapezoidal sum to be an over approximate. What characteristic should you be looking at for a trapezoidal sum? Do you remember? You remember then. What is it? <laughs> Concavity, remember? So I'm going to draw in a trapezoidal sum. I'm going to do it in yellow. It does need to be concave up. So let's break it up just to keep it easy. Let's do it just into two pieces. So if I draw my trapezoid in, is it an over or an underestimate of the real area? Over. Is that what I want? Yes. Okay, now go to B. Draw in your trapezoids. And then I look at my graph. Uh-oh. Where are my trapezoids? They're under where they're supposed to be. Over. So B's not going to work. What about C when I draw it in? They're also under. Okay, what about D? Are they over? Okay, D ends up being over. Now, what about E if it's linear? Would my trapezoids be an estimate of the area or the exact area? Okay, E would have been exact, and they're telling me I want it to be over. So that's not going to work. That's the exact area. E is out. Any linear line is exact. Any exact, if it's a trapezoid, is going to give you the exact area. Okay? Now look at the next part. I want to write Riemann sum to be an under approximate. So I'll do this one in blue. So I'm going to use my exact same graphs I already drew. Okay? If I cut across, these are my two y values. Which one do I want if I want the right one? I want the one at. 2. And then 2 to 4, I want the one here. Okay, then on my next one, I want the right side, which is here. Okay, and I want my right to be under, so I want which answer? A. Good job. All right. Good job. Okay, just some more practice this week. Uh, if you need to correct your test, remember Wednesday after schools. Uh, the area and volume test that you'll come back. Uh, I do one on Wednesday if enough people would show up. Like just an overview. But if I'm going to be here by myself, you know, then only with Yoel. Yes. Uh, can I get the one yesterday? Yeah. Can I get the paper? Uh, hey, you don't get all you need is that yesterday. Hey, you want to get yesterday? Yeah. Did you want to Yeah, sure. Um, it's uploading, but it's on the link that I sent you yesterday. It's on that same tab. Just look for the one that has the same name. Thank you. Huh? Is it correct? Yeah. It was one in two. Okay. Um, what Yeah, because it becomes a dragon.
She likes pizza. 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 That's why your limit doesn't exist. Okay. 